Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? My name is Hannah Jackson, though many of you may know me as Bird. Um, I am currently a sophomore here at the college, I'm originally hailing from Newark, New Jersey, and I'm an English major and Africana studies minor. Green light. That's the theme of the day, the initiation of movement. We all want to move forward, I'd like to think. And the thing I usually find is holding me back, which, which I'm sure many of you will agree with, is my past. Among many other useful things, college teaches us how to juggle, specifically our issues. We learn to balance traumas surrounding school, family, friends, politics, love, all while trying to find out who we are, what we want, what we're even doing here. We want to throw ourselves into the college experience. We are ready to become new people, the people we're meant to be. But we have things holding us back. Trust issues, insecurities, addictions, skeletons in our closets. It's been illuminated by George Bernard Shaw that if you can't get rid of the skeleton in your closet, you'd best teach it to dance. My skeletons dance in nearly every poem I've written. I'm a performance poet for Worcester's national slam team, No Eye Poetry Collective and poetry tends to be my method for self-remedy and release. It was asked of me by my coach, Kara Lee, that I take every traumatic experience I've had throughout my entire life and record them, consolidating them into a Google document. Um, that's my slam team, by the way. Consolidating them into a Google document. Now, the whole purpose behind this was to jumpstart the process of self-acceptance so I could stop running from my demons. Many of the stories that I listed in that document were scary to remember. I didn't want to tell the truth about them and risk exposing myself to the world and also to myself. Of all the lessons She's given me. The one thing Carol Lee has said that has always stuck out with me is that as a poet, I must always write the truth. We spend enough time telling safe lies to ourselves and to others. But if we truly want to heal the wounds of our past, we have to face them. The poem I'm about to perform is one that I wrote entitled, True Religion. Trigger warning, domestic violence, profanity. She Judas kisses her man to mark him as her very own. And without fail, he gives her hell, and she goes the way of Judas. So I guess that makes him Jesus. Maybe that's why when Tati enters the room, she falls on her knees. And when we whisper, girl, he's praying on you, she smirks, condescending, and answers, no, I'm praying to him. He has hair made of wool, bronze skin and open arms when he turns the tables and chases her like a Pharisee. And she says to me, I just need to serve him more faithfully. He loves her, she claims, and that's why he's always back. Like the second coming, he's back. Like revelations, he's back, riding a donkey of remorse. And she lays down palm trees for him, opens her arms, cries, Hosanna! How can she fail to notice her own crucifixion? He gave me his only begotten son, she says, and no one else. But I hear 
He's got at least 12 more disciples just like her. Says he doesn't, but I know the devil is a liar. He makes her call him daddy when he fucks her. I imagine when she chants, it sounds like prayer. Our father, our father, our father. Tatiana and I called, texted, carrier pigeoned, message in a bottled, two-way confessional for years. But she stops talking to me in school because he tells her not to. Made her wear his big, shapeless sweaters. They swallowed Tatiana whole and marked his sheep out to other wolves. I tried to be where she was. Knew she needed help, not how to give it. She said their relationship was something I just did not understand. True religion. The cakey powder of concealer that she left on my clothes when she'd hugged me hello accidentally exposed just how much his fist knoweth the arc of her eye. I want to end this blasphemy. I, Judas, kissed Tatiana to mark her as my very own. And without fail, she gives me hell. She looks at me and hisses. One week. Later, he tears her arm, her stomach, her face apart, clean off the bone, like a lion fed Christian. And she cries enough tears on my shoulders to lift and carry Noah's Ark. Thank you. Thank you. So. True religion was born of a tearful phone conversation that I had last year during Domestic Violence Awareness Month with my friend. Um, we were younger when it happened, and I watched her suffer through a very severe domestic violence situation. I felt guilty, unlike a friend. I felt as though there was something for me to do and I hadn't done it. Whole years after the fact, and writing this poem still saves me in some ways. Still saves her in that her story is being told. It is never too late to forgive or seek the forgiveness that lead to salvation and to peace. The worries surrounding us can seem so vast that the same decision becomes to ignore them. I'm here to offer three takeaways concerning that and concerning my experience. Number one, don't ignore them. They're there. The only way that you can escape them is by facing them, by accepting that your past is a part of you and by healing from it. The second one is to find your mode of healing. For me, it's poetry. I've been able to conquer my fears, my crimes, my wounds. It's different for every person, but you still have to find that mode in order to overcome what, what frightens you. The third piece of advice that I have is to use it. You can't overuse it. You can't use it enough. You can escape your fear. That power is in each one of us. Why not use it? There's no way that you can feel worse about it. By healing, you can only ever feel better. Why take the chance of feeling better away from yourself? In healing, you can get past your fears. You can spark your own movement. You can establish your own green light. Thank you.